In the last episode, we discovered one of our inner shrouds were damaged. Up right there, you can see the tiny damage. So we went to Cartagena to replace both of them. You and Shiny. Now we were ready to leave and we were determined to find some places to anchor. It turns out though, anchoring in the Spanish Mediterranean coast comes with some difficulties. And we were also to learn never to trust mooring boys. We are about to leave uh, Cartagena and uh, this town is actually a naval base for the Spanish Navy and a, a big uh, industry also. They're building ships here and they're building submarines like this one. Uh, this is a brand new and uh, when they've been making these They've made a kind of a small error. Uh, one of the digits uh, has ended up in the wrong place, which made it uh, 80 tons heavier than expected. And that's uh, kind of a big drawback for a submarine. It dives excellent, uh, but it uh, cannot resurface. So when they discovered that, um, uh, luckily before it was launched, uh, they made it 10 meters longer. Uh, and now it could resurface again. But uh, it turns out that the, the basis for these submarines then was too small. So uh, then they had another problem. So don't make your own submarines at home. It's kind of difficult. Nice to be living. It's been a really good stay here, but it's also very warm in the harbor. So once at the sea, you can have a little bit more of a breeze. Not going to be a lot of wind today, but we are on our way, always nice. The benefits of anchoring those days is, besides saving money, both that it gets less hot and more accessible swims. But we did not really realize how complicated it could be. The first thing is like that the Mediterranean coast of Spain is very flat, without much sheltered base we already knew, which makes it nearly impossible to anchor anywhere unless the wind direction is beneficial. It is uh, pretty interesting because beyond all those buildings that we're sailing past it's just uh, like a thin slice of land and uh, beyond it there's like I think a, a big lake or I don't know if it's like salty water but you can sail inside and there's like islands inside and marinas inside but uh, we heard there's a lot of jellyfishes so we ain't gonna go there but it's looking kind of nice from the outside. So we didn't go there and not much happened until we had the most beautiful sunrise the next morning. Gosh, what a gorgeous morning! Like it's a perfect uh, sunrise. It's uh, a bit windy. Um, it's gonna be more wind from the opposite direction. So uh, we are gonna go outside of uh, Alicante to see if we can find an anchorage with some shelter. But let me tell you about another challenge on the way. Because a lot of the coast is covered by the protected grass Procedonia, also known as the Neptune grass, an important piece of the ecosystem that needs everyone's attention. And you cannot wrap your anchor or your chains on this grass. But this accepts many good places to anchor, and the fines are really high, although most occasions you are kindly asked to move. Found an anchorage uh, in a small small patch of sand because it's a lot of Posidonia. It's because of this grass we have the transparency of the med waters and it absorbs enormous amounts of carbon dioxide. But it's also kind of good because the like the guards they come and they they actually look they like put a binocular down the water to see where you have your anchor and if you're not anchored on sand you have to move so but we got the thumbs up which is good because we don't want to be the tourist that just things wrong. So now we are a little bit outside of Alicante. It's an uh, like mainly apartments and uh, further back there you can see the town of Alicante with the big cruise ship in. So uh, we're probably gonna see if we can land our dinghy someplace and uh, take a bus to go there. And I haven't really told Gunnar yet because I didn't know if we wanted to go. But the World Ocean Race Museum is here in Alicante because it's uh, uh, the starting point that's been for quite a few years and it's going to be also for the next time. So probably we're gonna 
go and see the museum and they have like a simulator that you could sort of go in an ocean race boat on the water. And this comes with yet another challenge, because in many places you are not allowed to beach your dinghy anywhere. End of the station and we are at uh, El Puerto, very close to the Ocean Race uh, Museum and the first thing we see when you step off the tram is the Ocean Race boat sign. So let's go and find it. I think we are on the right way, it should not be that much uh, further. I'm really excited! I hope we are not booked a simulator but I really really hope we can do the simulator and it is fairly short because neither of us wants to get seasick inside it. They are a little bit bigger than you actually expect from seeing them out of the water. Small, small bumper. Uh, the museum is actually for free, which is pretty nice and cool. But the simulator, it's only on weekends. And um, I think it's Friday today, so we have to be back tomorrow then. As Swedish people, we are of course a little bit proud that the Whitbread turned into the Volvo Ocean Race, but now it's only the Ocean Race. But still, Volvo played a big part in this competition. Imagine the race has been going on for 50 years. Leaving the exhibition, we walked by the city marina. We were thinking of coming here with Tilda, but they wanted 60 euro for our little boat, <laughs> which is normally like 22 euros here in Spain. So we're just skipping out on Alicante and the metro was like 1.45, so <laughs> it was a good choice staying on anchor. Excited over finally finding anchorages in the Spanish coast, we set sails to discover some more. Normally anchoring is cut off from the beaches with large swimming areas, but they are actually better than when not, because if no markings, you have to stay 200 meters from shore, and for us, without the windlass, it's hard to pull up the anchor at those depths. This bay outside Moraira holds a lot of mooring buoys, an effort made to save the Posidonia. Sometimes they are free and sometimes charged. Here they are free, but all were occupied already when we arrived. But we found a good spot to anchor, as that was also allowed. I'm so happy! We found a really really nice anchorage. It's like, it's lots of boats, but I think they mostly day cruisers, so they will go away in the evening. It's super Turkish water, it's really crystal clear, it's a bit windy. Uh, it's just perfect and this uh, probably is going to be our last outpost before we go to the Balearics and uh, Ibiza as our first uh, aim so I've been waiting for that a long 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 time but at the moment it's just perfect here lovely can you see any difference from before I, I think have no, I have almost no here <laughs> it's like one centimeter off. Maybe it's not so easy to see. <laughs> I got a major haircut. If we need to leave Tilbert unattended, we normally try to row, as no outboard makes him less stealable. One thing we found here in Spain is that it's not always very easy to find a place where it's allowed to beach the dinghy, or a marina willing to let you leave it. But this time we were lucky. They were really kind, so we can uh, leave our dinghy here in the harbour for a little while to go and stack up on some food, and uh, probably we're going to see a little bit of town at the same time. We had a relaxed evening and then next morning we got some more wind in the bay. We thought we were safe as we moved to a mooring buoy. We moved to a buoy this morning because uh, they are a little bit more protected from the, from the wind that's suddenly come from another direction than the forecast. It got a bit choppy but not enough to make people leave. But soon we learned that mooring buoys seems to be for fine weather anchoring by day cruisers. The buoy was for a 10 meter boat, so it should be fine for us, but uh, we were just having a dive to the anchor, uh, not to the anchor, but to the 
like the, the bottom of the buoy and it was like jumping backwards so we quickly uh, detached before we were too close to another boat but there is like a huge motor yacht that also <laughs> took a 10 meter buoy and he's dragging it along like he's been uh, onto several boats already first he got stuck on a sailboat on anchor but the sailboat still managed to pull his anchor up and leave i think it's like no damage but uh, people are shouting and yelling and then he kept dragging sideways they are like dragging without control and he and we were far from the only one dragging buoys in fact later we heard stories of people waking up miles out at sea still attached to the buoy so don't trust them for other than fine weather day stops i'm glad we moved out of there because now we are a bit more safe it's a bit more windy but <laughs> i think on our anchor we will be okay well it was anyway soon time for us to move on we anchored in a pretty nice uh, bay and we're going to make a little bit of an excursion to the shore behind me it's supposed to be a short hiking route that's uh, very scenic and uh, i think that's what we can do in this heat and um, we also we didn't actually anchor here because there's a lot of buoys uh, but we think they are better than the one we had last time because we dragged it um, and maybe you can anchor here we see like a few boats that put their anchor down but they come and control the boats so it's preferred to not anchor so we hope the buoy is good this time and uh, I think it's also fairly safe to leave the boat now anyway because it's not, not a lot of wind. So yeah, let's go to shore. Nice to be in the forest, it's a bit windy, but uh, I think you can still hear the sound. There's a lot of cicadas everywhere. I don't know if they come through in the, in the video, but I love hearing them. Last part we sailed in Spain has mainly been like brown mountains and rocks with no vegetation. And we come from a region of forest, so we find it really, really nice to has some trees around us again and it gives a good deal of shade also with those views we'll leave you for this week looking out to where we were about to sail next as it was time to leave the Spanish mainland. I hope you liked this video and if you did please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you like to support the making of those episodes, you can also contribute by becoming a Patreon or buy me a coffee at the links below.